and of course, we're going to get into the Enneagram and, and some of the types today. I, I'm going to, I'm going to maybe just go down the list of the nine here for, for people so they can sure. have a, a working sense, even if they've studied this before, just to refresh everybody. It's the nine types. Number one, the perfectionist likes to get things done right, regardless of the consequences. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, the, I'll let you expound on some of these. Uh, there's a lot more that goes with each definition. But number two, the, the, the two type is the helper that nurtures others' careers, perhaps, and, and really wants to be appreciated for it, maybe demands to be appreciated for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, number three is the producer. They, they work hard to succeed, but they can burn out easily and, and overwork themselves. Uh, type number four is the connoisseur. That, is, that explores his or her creativity and deep feelings, but maybe gets lost in feelings. Yeah. Um, number five is the sage that craves data, loves theories and insight, but maybe forgets the human piece. Uh, number six is the troubleshooter, knows the secrets, likes to know the inside scoop, who can be trusted, but can get very paranoid. Number seven, the visionary, inspires people with brilliance and fun, imaginative ideas, but maybe leaves the little details, the closure to others. Number eight is the top dog, exercises leadership, but maybe ends up vengeful, maybe can be in a bully um, or authoritarian kind of uh, mode. And number nine, lastly, is the mediator who wants everyone working together as a conflict-free team, but maybe forgets his or her own goals. That's good. And you remind me that the Enneagram can be taken at many levels. Uh, There's a there's an easy, uh, 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 superficial level where you could be watching a movie and type the people in it, uh, in in at the level that you're explaining the types. But of course, people need to know these stories are deep and complex and and um, uh, compelling and um, and uh, layered, and uh, you can uh, you can take them much more profoundly. What's your own story with, with getting to know the Enneagram? Why did it take on such an interest in your, in your writing, in your career? Uh, you wrote The Nine Ways of Working, which is really about the Enneagram. I learned the Enneagram when I was in college. Uh, it wasn't very well known. Uh, the, the principal teacher was a man named Oscar E. Chazo, a Bolivian uh, philosopher. And um, uh, um, I wasn't that taken with it. It seemed, it seemed kind of... Uh, scientistic uh, and and dry and and I too don't want to put people in boxes I want to make a uh, connection to the person uh, to, to the to the heart and soul that's the magic in each of us um, uh, but I came back to it years later some years later with a wonderful teacher named Helen Palmer who had uh, uh, thought of the idea of gathering people of each type uh, in a in a panel, so you could see five or six people uh, of the type, and it really brought it home. Uh, and and it showed how we're we're telling these stories about ourselves uh, that um, often we don't know, but limit our range, limit our limit our capacity um, when we're too focused on on uh, just our own story. On the other hand, the story tells what's important to us, what we value, what has meaning. And it's nice to know that about yourself. It's nice to know that about somebody you're talking to. Yeah. Because we subtly, in general, make, make a, um, have an idea that the people are basically like us, but they are the distorted version. And so, and so uh, it turns out that people really are uh, focused on different things. And it's, it's, it's nice uh, uh, for yourself and for the other to know that you can uh, adjust your, your focus of attention. 